He owns 80%? No way! <laughs> this guy has up 12 Bs on this thing. I think anyone can learn how to analyze pharmaceutical stocks. It's not... It is so multidisciplinary that no one discipline will actually help you. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So all the talk today is this company Summit. Summit Therapeutics, which kind of had an ADR and then didn't. This is Bob Duggan's thing. And then they, they had an antibiotic, and I guess at some point they pivoted. I missed that. So I missed this whole spiel. That's one of the problems with uh, if you're not so front and center in the market. And I think this is what a lot of retail investors get wrong when they hyperfixate on one stock, like a GameStop or a Sava or whatever. There's so, there's so many stocks in the market. So while you're waiting and like thinking about your same old stock, there's oftentimes like a, a better stock that's out there. And you're just kind of so focused on this one stock because you don't know any better. And you know, I try to cover as many stocks as I can, but even I can't do it. That's why funds have many people on the team. And um, Summit is one of these stocks that just kind of, I just missed. And that's why you need to do this full time. If you're going to be an investor, you really have to try to do it full time. So it's still a London company, I think. Let me see. I don't think shorting Boeing is a great idea. Um, yeah, so when did they unlicense this thing? And why isn't Akiro up a bunch? Wow, somebody bought 22 million shares of this thing. So this is one of the biggest biotech companies now. <laughs> isn't that crazy? It just all of a sudden became one of the largest stocks. And it's a PD-1 VEGF bi-specific? 13 billion from one license. There's so many companies that spent decades building up their business and some it's already at 13 billion from one license. Crazy, huh? It's almost like BDNL is a really important function at these companies. Well, anyway, yeah, the 30 under 30 list, um, I don't know what to say. Um, it was only 30 people way back when and I recommended Vivek to the list after because uh, I think he's a couple years younger than me and I was just turning 30 and he was like 28 or 29 or something. Vivek made the list of the next year, but the next year was 30 under 30 in each. <laughs> you can't exactly pay for a spot, but it's gotten so bad. They need, they need people so bad that they, you can almost kind of use PR, a PR person to get named to it. So, hey, psst. well, the guy at Forbes, Nathan Vardy, who wrote the For Blood and Money book, which I still haven't read. Vardy asked me who, who belongs on the Forbes 30 under 30, and I, just mentioned Vivek because he was my largest stockholder at the time, or one of them. Vivek's story was even more impressive than maybe I realized. Oh, this is a Hizo, not a Kiro. I thought it was a Kiro. Oops. This is, this is a Chinese company. They, they are publicly traded. Hmm. Bit of an ARB here. Well, maybe not a huge ARB, but... Okay, so they got the license a while back, so there's no excuse. <laughs> yeah, so... It's up a lot on Chinese data. The question is, is the Chinese data reliable? Sometimes it isn't. It's hard to say. It depends exactly on the results, exactly, you know, it's a bunch of details, but so they're doing a phase three, Harmony three. I'll show you the key to like analyzing. All right, 322, let's analyze this trial a little bit. 322 patients, 54% reduction in disease progression or death. I don't think that's the result that we care about, right? We care about the new result. 49% versus Pembro in first line, PDL1 positive. Median PFS of 11 months versus six months. So basically we have to check if this is the right number, right, for, for Keytruda. Because if this number is a little bit too high and this number is a little bit too low, then you can kind of make some conclusions from that. But if the Keytruda number is very good, or it is comports with what has already been reported, then you can assume the trial was run relatively well to some extent. Here's a study that we can maybe glance at. So do you guys see, chat, do you see what I see here? I don't know, I might short this for an intraday, an intraday trade. So basically the idea, I mean, I still think this they'll get like a big partnership and all this stuff. It looks fairly balanced. There's a little bit of imbalance with the metastases, but not enough to, Sway the trial, I don't think. Yeah, I don't know. If you if you see 
it's really hard to tell if, I mean, there's clear separation. I, I would concede that, but this data can still mature a little bit more. I, I guess one perspective to keep here is Keytruda is such a big seller that even if one, oh, all the benefit driven by, oh, okay, well, 3B is a small group here. It's almost all four. Healthier did better, but that's a small group too. I guess one way to look at it is, look, even if uh, the benefit narrows, which I suspect it will, are you going to get people switching over? Will doctors switch over? Because after all, better is better, right? Any amount better is better. Yeah, I gotta say, I mean, it could be cheap. It could be a cheap stock. I'm waffling on this one because I still want to look at the data, but it, it does seem like in a controlled study, they beat Keytruda and Keytruda is selling 20 billion in revenue, almost all profit. You know, they're going to do a uh, big secondary tonight, but that's almost to be expected. Bob Duggan is such a trusted guy in biopharma. Yeah, I mean, the, the only, there's a couple pieces of diligence here. I don't think it changes the landscape for Iova because this is first line and they're really treating last line patients. But I guess if you look at that 5.8 number, if it was really 7.4, in other words, here, your curves are so close at that point that one or two patients gets you back to sort of what you'd expect. Oof, this is a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> On one hand, you have Bob Duggan, the Pharmacyclics Maestro. No, the market cap of this is 12 billion. This is survival. So these are, the red line is people on Keytruda, which is Merck's best-selling cancer drug. One of the best-selling drugs in the world. The blue line is people on this new drug from SS, SMMT, Summit. Oh, you be quiet. <laughs> He's a little baby. It does look better than Merck, yeah. Yeah, it definitely looks better than Merck. Oh, I really don't want to say something negative and then have it come back to haunt me. It certainly looks better than Sava. I mean, it could be a real breakthrough. This is a bigger study. Chinese patients are also a little bit different than US patients. So basically the idea is like, okay, your drug did 11 months and you're saying that's better because the other drug did six months, but something's wrong with this because typically people who get that drug don't live for six months or have PFS for six months. They usually get, um, now this is a better long, way better long. Sava's not a long. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's gonna be a while before we see more clinical trial results. And this data is a little sus. Because you, you can give, I mean, I guess the reason you don't want to give Avastin is it's toxic. I, I do analyze, we're, we're trying to get our head through, head around this um, result. And the China thing doesn't help. A lot of Chinese studies don't exactly replicate, but a lot do too. This is really tricky. Summit is uh, one of the largest biotech companies in the world now. They have one drug. Uh, Ivanescamab, and we're just trying to see if this result is legit or not. I don't, I think it's, I don't think we're going to get the answer today, but I do think you have a, a very unusually low performance for the control group. The thing about controlled studies is you kind of have to believe them. Like, uh, I don't know, like, it was such a big, big benefit. It's really hard to say that this is like something that shouldn't be trusted or like something that, you know, should be avoided. You think about the valuation, 12 billion. Well, now it's even higher, 15 billion. Just not small cells, like 15 billion in revenue potential. <laughs> uh, this is tricky. Because I guess if you think about it that way, if it's 50-50 that this holds up, relatively high discount rate, there's not that much upside. It might double, and then of course, if your 50-50 is right, you double again. 
The problem with looking at the other studies is that this trial is supposed to represent the randomized sample. So looking at another study, like Keynote 024, was done by the Keynote 024 investigators, which is a different sample. Right? Those are maybe like tertiary hospitals, like academic centers. This one might have been rural Chinese hospitals. Very big difference. And Keynote 024 was open label. I mean, typically you do get rapid progression early on. That's not uncommon, uh, I don't think. Maybe you'll look at Keynote 024 within three months to already be down to 70%. Unusual. Yeah, the, the inclusion and exclusion is important. The baseline is even more important. Okay, so they had some PDL1. Here's PDL1 PDL low and PDL1 high. And if you look at that, median PFS, sort of the same. A little, a little faster here, a little slower here. But either way, it's a win. I don't know, it looks like a W. If I had to sort of put everything against each other, all the puts and takes, I'd sort of narrowly edge out on the W. The problem is it's like really hard to, the old Buffett saying, you know, do I have to make a bet? <laughs> you don't have to make a, you don't ever have to make a bet. But you do have clear separation you have Bob Duggan, who presumably isn't isn't a fraudster, rich enough he doesn't need to do this twice. The guy's just becoming a legend right now. And this it's funny, this used to be a three to six month PFS and OS. <laughs> now you're, you know, like a six month OS. Now you're talking about 22, 28, maybe even 30 months here on, on overall survival. More time to say goodbye, I suppose. Uh, and maybe some patients even get cured. Um, but this data will mature more. And as it matures, I expect these lines will get a little closer, but they're probably not going to get so close to overlap or come close to that. He wants 80 percent? No way! <laughs> He's up. This guy is up 12 Bs on this thing. You heard that, chat? 12 billion. Man, I'm a hater. Jealous hater right now. And if he gets to 70 billion, I mean, he'll, I, you know, I don't know what to say. And how did the Baker brothers get in on this? It may be long 50 basis points. I think that's going to be my final, final verdict here. Man, this is tricky. I guess the other problem is I don't think momentum is going to work in this market. This MOA sucks. The, the, the rationale is you have the other arm of PD-1 anchoring the cell and the other arm of VEGF anchoring the vasculature, but I'm not sure I buy that at all. At higher, maybe they just got the dose right, because at higher doses, you're going to get the VEGF adverse events. I think it's going to be better. I think it's going to be better than Kichuda, which is like basically going to get you a, I don't know, $100 stock at least, something like that. But it's going to take time. Like they have to show that result again. And before, that's that's assuming the result happens, they'll get to, well, then you have other indications possibly. Well, I guess what they could do to A27's point is do a melanoma study or do a single arm study and see if you can't get replicatable, like, or gets better, I guess you still have to get better than Keytruda. Yeah, these studies take a while, like especially the adjuvant studies, stage three studies, stage three lung cancer, not phase three clinical trial. Uh, yeah, this is so tricky. See, I, wouldn't, I just wouldn't advocate, like if you really want a speculative, crazy high flyer stock, this might be a decent, Decent long, but I'm not sure that's the, it is definitely a, a wild animal. This thing is going to be interesting for years to come. Years to come.